And then I just said, okay, well, I've been through two drum teachers. They don't seem to be able to help me. So, you know, maybe I should just lay low and just play with my hand percussion. Maybe someday I'll figure it out, you know. Well, so, let, me, let me let me jump in now in that. Uh, well, first of all, with regards to this other teacher that you think plays great, you know, Buddy Rich might not have been able to teach us. There, that's the, uh, the special quality that comes with someone who is a great a master teacher. And I believe that, you know, you have to know how to do it to teach it. You have to be able to prove, Murray would say that all the time. I mean, you're not going to jump off a roof if I tell you to. I have to prove to you why I'm asking you to do uh, such a, a, a particular thing, technically. And, and so there are guys that, and who cares if you know what you're doing if you play like Buddy Rich? We don't, we, I've met Buddy, but I wasn't, it, it wasn't, the timing was it right? And my first, the first time I met Buddy, I was, I don't know, a 14 year old, maybe a 15 or 16. And uh, so it takes a, a combination of uh, uh, being able to play, I believe, and, and as well understanding what it is you're doing and being the kind of person that can proffer that information to, to, to a student. With regards to the fact that you feel like hand percussion, is comfortable uh -huh. you don't you're not experiencing the pain that we're going to right. look to yeah. today uh, that's, can... that, that's what steve that's what this technique is i i i, I remember a, a well-known writer uh f flying into la out of out of canada and one of the things he mentioned he said i saw carlos vega at the baked potato and I was sort of far back, so it was like I couldn't see his sticks. It was like there were no sticks, right? Because that's the approach. It 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 it'll probably it will help your hand percussion technique because we're just making these motions with a stick or without a stick. Okay. Yeah. So this this should be very comfortable. This should should feel this should feel familiar to you as we go along. I should mention before the other two teachers, there's a guy up in, uh, well, it's south of Orange County. He tried to show me again, too. And he said, well, gripping the fingers, well, how much pressure do I put on this finger and this finger? And he says, well, 20, 30, 40. I said, well, I don't know what that means, but I grip it. And all of a sudden, my fingers would start shaking like this. And I couldn't, and it would feel like they want to slip out of my, out of my hands. I said, why is, why is it my right hand seems to feel like it grips it? Naturally, the other one just struggles to even, you know, and you say, well, well, just mimic your right hand. Well, for some reason, it just, it's not as simple as you think, you know. <laughs> so anyway, that's that was that that kind of got frustrated at that point with trying to learn it, the technique. So anyway, I, that's, I, yeah. I talked too much, but uh, yeah. I, I wanted to get some kind of context with regards to what yeah. you're all about. Um, yeah, Dick Wilson would, would say that there isn't necessarily cross lateral transference, right? Okay. It's quite fascinating, and it's under it's under it's some it's an interesting phenomena. It it doesn't make sense. It's counterintuitive in a way. It's yeah. quite fascinating, and that's what's so beautiful about art, is that you know we have to connect the mind and the body. And uh, and as I think I mentioned to you on the phone, M Murray would say, I teach through the brain and the brain tells the hands what to do. And Dick yeah. says, maybe, but sometimes I just want the student to feel something. I don't care if they know what they're doing. I'll tell them after. Well, so we'll figure out where you're coming from. Okay. And, and sometimes it, it, it might, may, might be a combination of the two, right? So, okay. yeah. It, it's funny, it, it, it add your frustration to watch some seven year old kid flip around on the drums like, oh, he taught Buddy Rich or somebody like that. It's hot oh, as a six year old kid coming easy to you. Well, I'm here, I'm an adult that should have an advantage, and I'm sitting there trying to barely I can't get the gate, you know? It's just weird. Because we're clever monkeys and we, our brains get in the way of what is supposed to be natural. It's like you've got that 13 year old little girl from China. Oh, yeah. 
unbelievable. And she's pl using the, the Spivak technique. She's probably never even thought about it. Everything is there, right? Yeah. And, 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 and you're a big guy. She's tiny. She is that drum like a, right? She's yeah. into, that, into those drums with her tiny little arms and her little hands. But she's leveraging in a way that yeah. is very efficient. Yeah, is that, was there yo-yo something, yo-yo? I have it, I, I'll text it to you. Yeah, it was, the one I saw, maybe it was Chinese, but she, she would do the, take the songs of different artists and you play the, the actual song and she's playing the parts to it. Yeah. And there's a, some guy from this studio who was watching a music studio re reviewing, he's just blown away about this, this little girl doing this stuff, Steely Dan, uh, Tower of Power, uh, they have all the different people, and she's playing it like nice. just exactly how it was in the record, and it just it all sounds incredible. But yeah, it doesn't really help, doesn't help the ego. But what it does do is, if you can just look at it from a distance and not be totally overwhelmed by how impressive it is, is it will show you actually how simple it is. Yeah. Even, even a child could do it. Yes. That's Murray Spivak. I'm not teaching you anything you haven't been doing since the day you were born. <laughs> Right, so we're going to try to tap into into this stuff. Um, okay. We're not going to try. We are. It's impossible to fail. And um, and and so the first thing I I would ask you to do is just I don't know. Go and play something for me. Just play some singles or something. Just see what what it looks like. Okay. Uh... Okay, stop, stop, stop. Okay. First of all, I can see that you've been been around the instrument for for years. Your pad tells me that, but I can I can help you immediately. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, and I can see why your right is a little better than your left. So if you can be childlike, and and I I'm pretty sure you 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 can be, right? Um, in fact, we're all trying to get into that space, you know, that space, that thing that we felt as a child when it was just like, I saw that black sparkle drum set. Oh, yeah. That, I'm going to be a drummer. <laughs> the black drum sparkle drum set. You want to, you want to embrace those feelings. Um, and, and so we're going to approach this, we're going to start at the beginning. And so there are these fundamentals that, that you need to understand. As you've described to me, you said, I don't, I'm not looking to burst out with speed. I just want to learn how to play. And I know the speed will come. You see, that's, that's the gig. So to get there, we have to start right at the beginning and it'll make everything so easy because you've got some things going on that are interfering in terms of how we would play with this technique. So here's how we start. First of all, are, are you, uh, your practice pad is on a snare drum, I think, right? Correct. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's, I, I like having a soft gel pad as well. You've got the towel underneath. You can throw the towel on top until you get the soft gel pad at some point. Maybe we'll do that. Not not yet. Not yet. Okay. Now, now uh, also, your, 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 the angle of your pad looks just slightly askew. Is it really flat? If you put your stick on there, will it, will it stay flat? Uh, it's actually, it's the way I think it's it, it, the, uh, see. you see what I mean? Yeah, you, you, I want you to straighten that out. I don't mind if it's a little bit tilted towards you this way. Just, that's okay. You see, it's already, it, 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 because you want everything to be even, right? right? There is a lot of precision to this technique. Okay. And it seems as though, I was trying to come up with that word for, for you, it, it, Dick Wilson would say, Kevin, don't make the technique into a mosaic. Remember this, this, okay. this the stained glass windows in the church? Don't, don't do that. And yet at the same time, there are, are these subtleties and Dick would say, Kevin, the subtlety is everything. So it's like, well, what do I do? Stained glass window or subtle, you know, it's, and we just have fun working through this stuff. Uh, 
I'm all yeah. for it. Yeah. So the path, the, 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 and everybody's body shape is different, and, and you're a tall guy. Yeah. So, so for many people, running the stick from the navel to the pad works. It gives you the right height, and, and we want that, that stick to be. I fell here too, so my navel's like. <laughs> um, so now here's the other way to get it. If if what we want is the forearm to be parallel to the actual floor. Okay. To, now, if you just have your arm parallel to just do this with me, this is how we start. See, this is and don't take this lightly, right? Don't blow this off. This this is really what a big part of what you're missing. Believe it or not, it's actually really simple. All you want to do is let your arm hang plumb. You're just letting everything hang like an electrician's plumb, I guess. Yeah. And, and you're just going to bring your arms up. Bring them up. Perfect. You see, there's nothing wrong. Now you'll notice, are you familiar? Don't move. If you don't mind being the statue, the thinker. You know. um, are you familiar with Chuck Silverman? I've heard of him, yes. I studied with, with he, Murray and... He passed away, right? Yeah. I went and tried to download his video that he had made, and I somehow something went wrong. It wouldn't work, and I never got my money back. Anyway, go ahead. We, we would hang. Uh, he would trade clave and samba ideas with me, and uh, I, I would talk to him about what I was learning in regards to hands and so on, even though he'd studied, but he'd stuck for a while. So we had a, a fun thing going. And what you'll see in one of his videos, he talks about if you just, and you did it. See, I've had students that will, they won't, they can't do it. They'll argue with me about it. <laughs> You're like, but you come up and what position are you in? Now we're going to find out how much you know about snare drum technique and so on as we go along. Do you, do you know what this position is? Well, some people would call it like an American grip or something like that. Uh, you're close to American grip. When you first came up, you were a little more, this would be half turned over. Yeah. See, Th this is palm down. This is right. half turned over and, and here we are in French. Right. But, so as Chuck pointed out, I believe correctly, if you just let everything hang, what, we just want to find out what's really going on. And we come up, well, it's real natural, we're kind of like you were, you're half turned over. Now what you would now what you would do in, and we'll pick up a stick and do this in a minute is you just roll over a little bit, almost like you would, could play the piano. Okay, you, now that I feel right. Oh, and we don't want to be too much. And and you will feel that up. Uh, do you feel? Yeah, go go all the way. Go all the way. Oh, no, yeah. don't move your elbow out. Move your elbow out. I want you, I want you to feel the pain. I want yeah. you to feel how this is uncomfortable. No, yeah. no, you have to leave your arm. The arms you keep introducing. This is what you're doing. You're introducing a part parts of the body that aren't necessary will really hang you up if you're trying to play this technique. So if you come up and you just leave the arms hanging, it is kind of it's comfortable this way. And if if you roll over too much this way, I feel a little tension. Yeah, it, it kind of does want to push the elbow out a little, doesn't it? Yeah, so it, it, a little uncomfort, just a little. So I, Dick would say. I, 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 sorry, go ahead. I just got my right doesn't really feel the pain like this, but this left one just a little bit. Okay. I can feel the tension here. And it's like there's a rubber band that wants to pull my hand back this way because it's like it's pulling it this way. You know? oh, okay. Those are I think Murray would call those oppositional muscles. And and you might have something going on here. After years of, of playing the way you're playing, I think we can relax everything. But you should feel and the fact that both arms are a little different. Are you a right-handed or left-handed person? Right-handed. Okay. So there's all these factors. So we'll just gently, calmly figure this out. So Dick would talk about that. He'd say, you don't want to bend, come over so far into match that it becomes uncomfortable. And when we're on the drum set, we're going to be playing a lot of half turned over, all over the place, right? And even French, you know, symbols over here. It's uncomfortable to do this for me. So it's it's very comfortable to be in, in a uh, thumbs up grip in French. So now what we're going to do is we haven't even talked about the grip. Yeah. Because we need to talk about the arms. Yeah. 
okay? Yeah. So that we never have to talk, that's not fair, but we don't, we don't want to, this, this technique, as Buddy Rich would say, as Richard Martinez would say, yeah. it, it's, it's all a wrist turn, Buddy Rich would say, it's all in the wrist. He, he, he meant that, he really did. And so, now we have the sticks. Now, now, I'm just going to have you, I'm still not going to talk about the grill. I'm just going to have you let, let the sticks hang by your side. Ah, it, it's kind of hard to not hold them in a normal way. There's dangling, right? You've got the first finger and thumb, and then you kind of wrap your hand around the stick, and everything's hanging, right? <clears throat> now, <clears throat> you're playing on a snare drum, really, with a pad on it. So you're going to be in, like you're almost in double pedal territory in terms of your stance. Dick would talk about this, and if you if you enjoy going to the symphony, I've studied how those guys sit. They're all sitting somewhat similar on a, on on a drum set, but if you're if you're behind a surface that isn't so large, and and you can straighten out your body as a violinist would, where they they're all kind of sitting in the same similar way. Uh, we want to just be as comfortable as possible. The gig is, is that, see, we're right at the beginning, giving you all the stuff. The gig is, is that we're, we're like, as we sit, we're like a three-legged stool. Each side of our rear end is a leg, that's two. Or you could consider that maybe the third leg, and then each leg itself are the two. So you have a three-legged stool. You've got the rear end, and they have the two legs, and you're and you're sitting comfortably, balanced. We we don't when we play the pedals, and we haven't done a foot lesson yet, but hopefully we will. But you'll notice if you try to lift up, you'll have to you have to go ahead and lift up your legs. It's hard. You have to lift, hold on here. If you don't hold on, what would you? You have to lean back. Yeah, it's hard. We don't we don't play the bass drum by ever lifting our leg up like that. It'll throw you off balance. Yes. Uh oh. What's that? I'm going to turn that off. Some kind of. No, not now. How do I get rid of that? Now we're more disabled backup. What is this? Delete your PC. Cancel. Oh, this is weird. I've never even seen this. Oh, here we go. Ouch, that's hurting me. It's terrible that they would introduce something like this. Let's see if that works. It's very weird. Delete your PC backup. What the heck? I can't get rid of this. I don't know how. Learn more. Let's see what this does. Yeah, we, we, we're, we're learning more with the rest of the world here because I can't get rid of this. Uh -oh. Now what? I've, I've never had this happen in all my years, have something pop up like this. Oh, really? What is it doing? It's uh, some kind of thing that wants me to update a Dropbox backup. Oh. All right, so what I'm going to do, well, let's see if it goes away. Okay. It won't give me a way to get rid of it. Oh, let's see if I can get rid of it this way. How to use update. No, thank you. Ta da. Okay. My apologies. Uh, so, we're right at the beginning. We're just going to let, talked about how to sit, talked about the feet, but we don't want to have to be countervailing. We just want to be this three legged stool. Okay. So, we're just, we're just letting the sticks dangle. Fires. 
how relaxed that is? Nothing sturdy. It should, right? It's holding the sticks. If if I let go, they'd fall. But I'm right. just hold them enough, barely hold. And you come on up, and you'll be in that half turned over grip, just like you were with no sticks. No. Now look what just happened. This is kind of cool. Listen to this. Sometimes teaching someone that really hasn't studied this technique is is can be an advantage. You're not crowded with too many ideas, although you do have some weird bad habits. But yeah, why is it that with you see? I told you that this is like hand drumming. If you have sticks in your hand and you come up and it looks like this, why is it that when you come up with sticks in your hand it looks different? Some some clever part of your mind is doing something has decided that now I'm holding sticks. No, 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 maybe, maybe you are. But if you just hand a kid some sticks, they go, oh, you mean they? Yeah, let me, uh, uh, play, play with that for a minute. Uh, More like that. Now take the sticks out of the hand. Your hand, arms hang down and bring them up as naturally just from the, okay. You see, now notice the angle of this part of your hand. It's not, now, Take sticks, and that's where you should end up, like that. You can do it in your right and leave your left out like that if you, but okay, that's fine. Come on up. See, it looks different, doesn't it? Now you look what you've done. Why have you twisted in? It doesn't look the same. Where? I, I know. I told you we'll figure this out. So, in uh, take the stick out of your left hand. And now you've, you've got a stick in your right and no stick in your left. Okay. I'll do it with you. I'm making this stuff up, by the way. But I, I, I know it well. I know all of this stuff well enough so that I'm pretty sure this will help. Let's see. So we're going to come up. Perfect. Now, just feed your left hand the stick. Don't move your left hand. Just feed it. Yeah, don't, don't do anything. Yeah, I don't care. Just let it lay there. There, it looks normal. Yeah, okay. Grip grip could be improved a little, but it's kind of normal. Your, everything is lined up. See, there's a beautiful alignment about this. I'm giving you, this might bore certain people that, even people that aren't invested in, yeah. If you're invested in this technique, you have to know about this stuff. And so, there is an alignment. Richard Wilson would say that the stick isn't a direct extension of the forearm. Not quite. And yours isn't. It looks really good. <laughs> it's just like, that's it. You, you're done. Not very nice meeting you. You've graduated. I mean, it, it's, it's, the stick is just laying in your hand like this. You can order some coffee. You know, the phone, right? It's just, it's a nothing burger. Now, there is a certain natural alignment that occurs. We don't, we're, now we'll talk about the grip and we will get into the alignment a little more. You notice we haven't even played yet. All right. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Well, stick, no, you see, we're trying to eliminate confusion. So, let's talk about the grip, because the grip is a big deal. Your grip looks not too bad. It looked pretty good in the right, too, even though your arms, because this is how you started. See, it's not that. All this tension. Oh, my God. Ah. Okay. You already look so much more relaxed. Okay, so the grip. Let's talk about the grip. Okay. This this technique involves a very specific three it's a three finger grip. Now I will be transparent in the fact that when I first started, without naming anybody, it doesn't matter. But and I happened to be playing this really loud gig with a band called Tapestry. It was a horn band, with percussion, playing 
clave and playing playing pop tunes and power power and we were playing pretty loud venues and it was like i didn't know what i was doing i also hurt myself in traditional playing with a really loud band because i would without getting into it i had to figure that out see i've been through this stuff and and so the three finger grip thing and you're not playing in a heavy metal band right now but once you know what you're doing i mean chad wackerman he's he's killing it he's using this technique nice. so there's this thing there's this three finger grip and it, it it can be scary especially from someone like us who perhaps came from 1960s where everyone's traditional and suddenly amplifiers are introduced right right and now you're hearing the pop music of the day with that gated backbeat it's not even a drummer yeah yeah and they're going <coughs> and you go but this works if you know what you're doing dick would say you can also introduce the ring finger for more power if you really need it so just don't don't let what happened to me happen to you uh, just kind of invest in this and on a live gig if you're playing any live gigs on on the kit you just play by feel and by ear this stuff will will, will seep in okay so it's this three finger grip let's start with this yeah now careful we just want the arms to be relaxed at all times they're, they're never, we're never doing anything with them. That's what Dick loves so much about it. He, he said, the arm is for free. You, you, you think, on, as he, you know, Dick Wilson played the Brahms violin concerto at nine years old at Carnegie Hall. Wow. He said, do you think to get loud, I do this? No, no, you leave with the rest. You, to get louder, you don't get tight. What, the drums aren't another instrument in the symphony orchestra? Only the violins and all the other instruments can stay relaxed and play triple forte? He didn't believe that. And, and so we just relax the arms and we're gonna let the stick lie in what Murray would call kind of like a little cradle, like a little like bottom of a candy cane or the top of a candy cane <laughs> it's a little, or a little saddle, all kinds of metaphors. Right? But it's a sitting in that little cradle. You create a little cradle and it sits in the first knuckle of the middle finger. Right in there. And you'll notice that your stick is countervailing. At a certain point, I'll be more Socratic and, and you'll, you'll be answering my questions sometimes. Because I want, but right now, I'm just going to keep this moving. Notice that this butt end is, the palm is countervailing the butt end. Feel it? Yeah. You take your first finger and th thumb off, everything off except for the middle finger, and it's just sitting there. You, I think you'll see that in the in the Marie Spivak teaching Louis Belson video, right? And this is what we call, it's a, I could call it a balance point, although it's not a balance point in the, in the, in the sense that it's slightly off balance, isn't it? And Marie talks about that in the video. Just try this with me now. If we go up to somewhere in the closer to the middle of the stick, it's quite bouncy, right? It's there is a place on the stick where it will literally balance like a scale. See? So now I don't know, that's not what we want. We want a little weight forward, so we're going to move back a little bit on the stick and. Now just lift up the stick. Now just just create a little cradle and just a little support underneath with one finger, with your other hand. Lift up. Yep, that's it. You, you can stay kind of as palm down as you can stay. You can still be palm down. Now just lift up the stick and drop it. See what happens. No, no, with your hand. No, just stay. Keep down. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. There it is. There it is. Ta da! See, that's your. That's your fulcrum. That will be your fulcrum. That's okay. that's a critical thing to understand. Right. I'm going to have to my
give me just a moment while I hook it up. I don't no want to lose it. No problem, Steve. I'm right in the middle of something really good. Yeah, yes, yes you are. Because you, you've got the relaxation of the body now in terms of you have a stable foundation in terms of how you're sitting. Yeah. Uh, you, you have arms that are learning to be normal and just right there. Relax. Yeah, they can just relax. And and now and and now you're learning how the hands are have a feeling of as if there is no drumstick at all. I think you can still hear me. You know, it's it's said that once you start to get this technique, the drumstick it kind of disappears. Interesting, right? We want to feel as little as possible. So we don't make a big deal out of the fact that here we have no drumstick and now we do have a drumstick. This, as Murray Spivak would say, it's just a puny piece of wood, <laughs> right? <laughs> Although it does have some weight, so you have to be careful. Because we're we are holding something up. We we want to we want to be aware of that. So how heavy is a drumstick? It's uh oh, it's heavy enough so that if we just drop the drumstick, we get a pretty good tone. I'm not adding any force whatsoever. In fact, in this technique, we are very considerate of taking advantage of the nature of living on planet Earth. And we 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 work with gravity, not against it. There, nothing. No hand, no no human. Well, there was a human being to drop it. That's it. OK, right. So now what you've got is you're just down. Don't move your wrist. You're just going to mm -hmm. leverage this up. It's just resting on, a, on one finger and you're just going to drop it. Like that. There. Does that does that hurt? It doesn't hurt at all. You know. Now, if you want it to bounce, if you want it to bounce a little more, move up on the stick just a little, tiny bit. There it is. Stay nice and relaxed. You don't have to do anything with your hand. It just sits there, like that. It's right down there. Okay. Now is the point where I'm going to talk about this. Okay. Before I finish up discussing the grip, it makes sense. There's some kind of chronology in terms of my presentation, I think. We have a starting position with this technique. It's become known to us as the floor. It's the floor. It's our starting position. It's our zero bias line. It's from where everything begins and ends, right? Okay. Does that make sense to have a beginning? You know what I mean? Right, right. Right. So we're at the floor. The floor is typically a half inch to an inch parallel bead to butt end to the playing surface. And if the playing surface is flat, it's going to be essentially parallel to the, the actual floor. Right. Right. Yeah, you're at the floor. Okay. And it okay. So now when you when you go to let the stick when you go to discover this newly uh, uh, experienced tactile feeling in your body, you, you want to be see how see how I'm at the floor here. I'm at the floor, right right down there, right right at the floor. I'm not up here. Doesn't want to bounce up here. I'm not too low. It'll get the shank. I'm at the floor, and I just lift it up. And I can let that stick bounce. It'll bounce right there at the floor, like that. See, now you're really at the floor. Now you're. And notice your hand isn't doing. You're just. Your hand is like a platform of a sort. The one that's kind of the fulcrum. It's just doing nothing. The fulcrum is a point of inactivity. Now with this technique, we're going to be supplying force to the lever arm via the wrist, not with the fingers. Later on down at the end of the technique, you, you get it, you get into fingers. But this technique is about having a fulcrum and applying force to a lever arm 
forced to resistance, right? This was stick has the weight. Forced to resistance, rocking over a fulcrum. Okay, that's where this is going. So this is very intellectual. It's called the lever system. Okay. Without being too intellectual, we'll save that more more on that for another another time. Okay, so now we have our starting position in the floor. We have a feeling of where the stick lays in that middle finger, right? We have a feeling of your arm. I have a question. The Go ahead. Stick, is it right on? Great question. Great question. See, eventually you'll be able to teach this, but it's just next to this bone. Dick would say that if, if you're letting that stick bump into that bone, you can hurt yourself on your, you know, on your heavy metal gig. So it's just next to the bone. There's this little fatty area. Just in here, you can almost with a, enough meat in your hand, you could you could almost create a divot. Dick, Dick would sometimes. So it's really to the, in my case. Right in there. Yeah. yeah. Little, my bone right here. But it's just next to the bone. It's next to the bone towards the baby finger. Perfect. Okay. Beautiful. See? Now you'll notice. Now, now you're all excited. You're already looking so much better, dude. You're right. Look. How many rebounds did you just get? Doing like hardly anything. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Quite beautiful. So what we're doing now is we have this little cradle, middle finger. It's on the meaty part just next to the bone. Good call. And then what we do is we bring the first finger and thumb, the flat of the thumb and the first knuckle of the middle finger come in on the sides. And they act as a guide. They're guiding the stick over the middle finger fulcrum. They become the fulcrum, like so many guys, real pinched up front, pulling with their fingers. So that this ends up first finger and thumb become the fulcrum. That's not this technique. This technique is about discovering the feeling of the stick in the middle finger and guiding it with the thumb and first finger. And Dick would say with regards to the guide. Again, these are just words, but they could be helpful. Guide, first finger and thumb, is firm, comfortable, and constant. Constant. You're not changing pressure, which is why I think you mentioned this to me on the phone. I think you said you see this space close up. Yeah, you close up on me. Yes. Because you don't understand the guide. You don't understand the functioning of the hand. No one has ever presented it to you this way. Right. And it's OK, because just understanding it intellectually won't completely cure it, but it can't hurt. OK, so stay with me now. So now we have the middle finger, first finger and thumb come in on this side. And we don't want to end up, just because we're doing something with our hand, we don't want to end up contorting. So I'll give you another little, uh, or I shouldn't use the word little because this is big stuff. With regards to understanding this technique, this is the stuff. So with the stick not in your hand, I want to show you another way the hand functions. Because you're okay. certain there's no stick in your hand. Uh, it's starting to get a little tend to hurt here after a while. Yeah, but you, you may have done some some damage playing incorrectly, quite frankly, you know. So we just want to relax everything. Yeah. I have another student who's no longer with us. Who was suffering terribly. A little different than you. And I was able to cure him of that. Really? Happened immediately. Yeah. His name was Trevor, maybe. Believe it or not, out of yeah, Canada, and he passed away. It was he's, he's a younger guy too. It's a tragic tragedy because he was a lovely man, and he was so excited to finally not be feeling what he had been feeling. Okay, so that, this is where I was. So just go into this position with me. Yeah, use your left hand because that's yeah. You see now that shouldn't hurt. No, there's nothing. Yeah. 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 And, and so I just want you to bend your wrist forward. Not your arm, you see, your army. Got to get rid of the arms. There it is. You, dude, 
there's nothing wrong with you physically. Well, there, there, you may have something going on. I'm, I'm, I'm not a doctor, okay. But I can just tell you, your body looks more normal than some of my students. It takes a while to get them to do that. Right, so you see what happened? Did you notice? Because this technique has a lot to do with noticing. What do you notice? Now I'm going to ask you, what did you notice? Well, I go, my hand, my arm doesn't move. I just go down and just relaxed. And what happened? Uh, keep going, keep going, go deeper. Okay. Just do what you did, okay? But I don't have the tension I have over here, I think. Dig yeah. it. Here's what here's what you're not quite getting. And as we go along, you'll start to get better at being the detective, you know, the technique yeah. detective. Look, look what, what did my fingers do? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yes, they did. Did you open them up or did they open up from the wrist? Open up from the wrist. I tell the wrist turn. You don't need to use your fingers. They will behave perfectly with this technique. They will do everything you want. Now, see, I'm already, it's like a massage over the internet, right? It's like a self, you can really get in touch with your body, right? And now if we turn the wrist all the way up to the ceiling, and not using arm, and leave everything alone, it does that, perfect. What happened to your fingers? They it's kind good. of, in, they come in a little, don't they? They come to the, towards the palm. Don't lift your arm up or you'll destroy the mechanism that's doing that. You see, as soon as he introduced the arm, Murray would say, now you're not going to get the wrist motivating the fingers if you're pumping. See, it doesn't happen. Right, right. It only happens if you use your wrist like that. Okay, cool, right? Right. Just there's Murray explaining why you should jump off the roof. See, I told you. <laughs> now, so we have, we have the floor. We have this script that involves the middle finger, the first finger and thumb, which are firm, comfortable, and constant. The fourth and fifth, we haven't even talked about them. The Dick would say that, and they're not even on the stick. They, they can be just on the side of the stick. You know, there, there's certain Murray fanatics that were, made a really big deal about keeping the other fingers off. It, it's just supposed to be natural. It's a three finger grip. The, the ring finger and the baby finger have very little to do with it. Look, now just hold your hand up like this. And uh, so your hand is, come, to the, come to the center because you won't, you won't, you'll be off. You see, now it doesn't look right now. Let's, so let's just figure it out. Okay, so. My, hand, my hand's facing this way. Yours is facing forward though, I think. Maybe a little more, but either way. Now let's do this. I'll come and, and put the butt end against your palm, not the other way around. That really is a heavy middle. Uh, okay. okay. Now, now this is this is like a Richard Martinez thing where he he does he talks about you know the bird on a wire. You know the way a bird lands on a telephone wire. They, they don't go. They just they just go clunk clunk. So just do this with me. Do that thing that you're already, sorry, looking better. Just do that, no, don't, arm has to be parallel. We really want to learn this, not down, not up, parallel to the floor. Forearm, forearm parallel. You were here earlier, right, remember? Come on, bring it up a little, look at yourself. That, like that, you got it. Okay, now bring your wrist so it's kind of flat. Looks a little like a Carmen Ghia, not a Volkswagen. Not a Jaguar, it's a Carmen Ghia. Not too, yeah, right there. It's a little bit of a, a, a concaveness here, a little like that. Perfect, beautiful. Okay, this is the stuff. Like, it's like, I don't hear to karate, it's like kata, you know. And so I want you to do the thing that you've already been successful at. See why you want to watch this video? Because you can remind you, just do that. Fingers opened, now take the stick, put it somewhere around here. And I'm ready. Now, just as you begin to feed your hand the stick, you bring the stick up so that the fingers will close. Don't. Oh, it was perfect. No, wait. 
but yeah, look at your grip. Okay, let's do it again. Come on, stick out of the hand. Underneath. Come on, you have you forgot the pep. Come on, get this. Be really careful with the experiment. So this. Yeah. this I know you, we're, I'm holding it off, but this is not you. I already told me this didn't hurt. Just let your arm hang. Yeah, just, yeah. Shoulder. And just keep this flat. Don't have it down. Yeah. Just hold it up a little like that. Yeah. Let all this hang. Now bend forward so your fingers are open, which they are. Now you're going to feed yourself the stick. Don't do it yet. I'll show you. And get the stick parallel on your knees, not at an angle, like just parallel. Like you're going to feed it. It's going to come up as your hand. accepts it and closes and stop. Don't go any further. Stop. You're perfect. Show me your grip. Show me your grip. Looks better already. See, there's like a three finger thing going on. Flatten out your thumb a little. We want as much of that thumb on as possible. Get in the center of that. Now I know because we're you're dealing with a smaller screen. Come come to the center just a little more. Yeah, just you can come back. It's nice and comfy, right? Let's try like yeah, like that, or you could just move over like that. Now hold the stick so it's pointing at the ceiling. Now I'm going to show you something else. Remember that three finger grip? Yeah. See the energy of the middle of a thumb is heading out right to in between the two fingers. Yours isn't. Your thumb is up here somewhere. That stick is not squared off. Come on, get that thumb down a little. Just put the flat of your thumb on. Okay, I'm going to do another thing. We're just taking our time. Because you've been dealing with something on a physical level that is not cool, and I got to address that. So now I'm going to give you the Carlos Vega thing. Okay. Now this is remedial. Go ahead and push that thumb into the stick, so it's uncomfortable. I mean, you never play, but go on. No, the whole flat of the thumb. You see my thumb? Look at it. It's like it looks like this. Right. Move over a little. Scoot. Up. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Now bring your first finger up. Keep that same pressure. First finger up. Now bring the middle finger up more. Creep the middle finger up. Come on. Yeah, there you go. Now bring the first. No, don't. You bent your thumb. Keep your thumb flat. First finger just a little higher. Just a little more up. Now bring the back finger, the middle finger. Just now look at it. Keep the thumb flat. See that? It's some pressure in it. Now you've got some pressure. You've actually created a little divot here. See the divot? It sits in there. Look, now just relax that a little. There's your grip. That's your grip. It's a three finger grip. There's a little pressure. Mer uh, 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 Carlos Vega, I think he's, it's, you're tight, but you're loose, whatever that means. But you're holding something, not with a death grip, but a very specific grip. Much better. Now, now what we're going to do is we're just going to come over the surface. Now I don't want you to be like this. Remember, the stick was kind of like this. So let's just let's just feed the stick, feed the stick into the hand again. Just do this again. It's not bad. Put the stick in the to the center of your hand, just for fun, with your other hand, with your other hand. Into this, into the right, into the center of your hand. Remember, remember the bone thing. Okay. Is it in the center of the hand now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. See, that's almost where it should be if it was just against the bone. See, your alignment looks pretty good. So just move it out to the bone. See, mine's on the bone, and it's still more aligned than yours. Mine doesn't go from the center. Of the, the center of the hand, it would be perfectly aligned, which apparently Murray used to teach. Are you off? Are you off? Just off the bone there? Because it looks really good right now. Yeah, I'm off to the off the center. So. Okay, it, it, look, it looks pretty good. See, th there's some give or take here. W we can play a little more. They called it around the barrel. You, you, you can get plenty out. But once re things really get going, it's going to look a lot like this. You get this beautiful alignment. OK, now what we're going to do. Is we're going to come up. An inch. Just come up an inch, not with your arm, with your wrist. There, and touch the surface. You don't have to push it down, just touch it. Touch it like a, a baby's cheek. 
That's beautiful. Just don't lose your grip up front. Remember, it's firm, comfortable, constant. Get that flat of the thumb on there. Relax your arm. Your arm's starting to get stiff. Just let it hang. And just lift it up and touch it. So we're moving at the same speed up and down. Yeah. Look how we're moving. Up and down. The hand wants to shake a little bit. I mean. Okay. That's okay. I don't even want you to play. Now touch the surf. Just just take the stick. Just hold it here. Now, now just reset. Just reset. Because everything was fine. You see, I pre already proved. Let's let it lay in the middle of the middle finger. Put the first finger and thumb on. Relax your baby finger. It doesn't need to freak out. Uh huh. Put it on there. It's looking good. There you go. Looks, that looks nice. Now, from right there, you're at the floor, aren't you? Kind of half uh, an inch. This is why it shakes for some reason. All right. It's it's okay. I, I've been through that myself. I, I actually suffered from that. Okay. Okay. I did. In fact, I went through a very major car accident. Wow. You, yeah, you don't want even want to hear about it. As a passenger, I ended up upside down, trapped between the uh, trapped between the roof and the uh, the seat. What do they call that? The head headrest or whatever. The headrest. See, I didn't want to even remember it. So uh, this this should be up near this one, right? One should be close. They are they are pretty close, but it'll be natural. I mean, your body will tell you when you do this how close are they. See, the body will do that. That's how close they are. You do this, you do this, and you'll have this. Okay, there, yeah, not bad. Okay, so now just touch the surface. Just touch, we're not, just touch. So the stick is laying on the surface now. You, you, could, you could take all the fingers off and do this, couldn't you? Just listen to that. Okay, put your grip back together. Let's just let it lay on the surface. There's no tension. Now, remember, I'm giving you, I'm kind of giving you the whole thing here. You know, Murray would really give you the whole thing in 15 minutes. Nobody realized it or would get it, but he really did. Now, remember, remember you did this. Right. Don't, don't do it. The fingers opened up and everything. You're touching the surface. You're not gonna, you're not gonna let the first finger and thumb open up. They're firm, comfortable, and constant. They're just kind of holding it, but you're gonna bend forward. You're just going to bend forward. Let's try it this way. Bring the stick up half an inch parallel to beat, beat to butt end. And, and touch the surface and keep bending. Can you? Can you go down further? Can you keep bending? See, this is totally unfamiliar to you. No wonder your hand hurts. Because you're not letting the body do what it would it wants to accommodate for for very specific purposes uh, how are you going to how are you going to access that middle finger for rebounds if you don't learn to do this and by the way i have richard wilson doing this teaching me it's on youtube you should watch him he's up in the air with his left hand he goes kevin you're sorry, you're never going to feel it until you learn to feel it he does it two ways until you learn to feel this so small you know until you feel this which you've already done or you feel this. So you're already feeling shit. We're just, we're just going to lay the stick. My hand is now the surface. See, everything, everything's flat. I never changed the experiment if I can help it. And I'm going to touch. And look, it's exactly what I did before. Only my whole hand open. Now I'm, I'm holding a stick. So the first finger and thumb aren't going to do too much. So just go ahead and do this again. Stick is this kind of, you can take your thumb off. Just let it lay in the whole hand for fun. Just get to know the weight of that. Come on, put your first finger on too. Look, I have no, I've got nothing but put all your fingers on except for the thumb. Let it lay in there. What about the baby finger? There it is. See how, see? Now put your thumb on. It's just kind of laying in the hand. Kind of, yeah. It just look, looks really good. See how natural and normal everything looks? The stick lays in the hand. And and now what we're going to do is we're just going to, I think you have your other hand out here, hopefully, I underneath the stick. So, yeah, yeah, no, no, put your hand, put your arm back where it was. See, it's just laying in your hand. Thumb is on now. And you're going to put the other hand. I don't care if I can see it. I don't need to see it. Put your other hand under the stick like this. 
So it's like a drum. So you're holding a drum here, like like you're holding a drum here. But I'll just use my hand. OK, now you're just going to touch your hand. Go ahead and touch your hand. Don't have to shake your fingers. Now, how come I didn't see your wrist change position? If I go to touch my hand a half an inch, my wrist will move a tiny bit. There, OK, now it's touching. Now, bend forward. Can you bend any more? With oh, wrist. I know, I know. This is going to help you. So just stay with me. You say bend forward. You mean bend forward with my wrist, or with your wrist, bend like you did over here. Not with your arm. No, 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 no. You're almost. Like, remember, remember you, remember you fed yourself the stick. Okay, I'm touching, but then you, while it's touching, you want me to bend. Is that what you're saying? And and see the butt end is on your palm next to yes. that. Bone. Okay, if I keep bending, the, the butt end starts to go down. Just by bending, you don't have to open your hand up, it will open up. You have to trust this, like that. There, smoothly, don't throw it open. It means you're using your fingers. It would go smooth with the wrist, with the wrist. No, now you're moving your arm, so I told you the wrist ain't gonna work. <laughs> the fingers. This is all work out as soon as you just get rid of some. You just need to do way less. If you're getting there, there you go. Just touch and keep bending. Yeah, it would go all that way, wouldn't it? It'd go all the way to there at some point. Yeah, see, and you haven't moved your arm at all. And now it comes up. So we, we touch, and the stick seems to go down parallel, but it's only gonna go down a tiny bit. So let's just come over the surface again. Come on, relax your hand. Remember, it was just laying in your hand. Let's do a little more of that whole laying in the hand thing. That was, that was helpful for you. But it is a three-finger grip. Like this is late. Now take your thumb off, just get that feeling of it laying there. That was good for you. Nope, first finger too. I want it laying in the first finger and the baby finger. All the fingers are acting like a cradle. Now put your thumb on, nice and easy. Okay. Now come over to here. Now yeah, it looks nice. Now just touch the surface. You'll now experience feeling the butt end is still touching your palm, isn't it? Yes. Bend a little more and allow the hand to open and you'll feel the butt end. Oh, just bend. You'll feel the butt end go down away from the palm. You just have to bend. You already did this. There, like that. Smoothly, like that. Go, sm go slower. Go slower. Slower. Now come back up to parallel. The hand closed. It opens and closes right back to the floor. Opens, closes right back to the floor. Opens and closes. This time just go, and then it and then make some notes. Just go, come on and leave it there. There it is. Now, if you really had your fulcrum together, it would rock, but it's not already working. That's right. Just bend forward, it'll bounce. Yeah, just bend forward. Ah, no tension, nothing. Yeah, yeah, you have to bend forward and just let it lay there for a minute. And then to come up, you don't go lifting it up way up here. You only lift it up there if you're going to actually make a note that loud. What we're doing is we're just feeling this, the blah, you some bouncing, and then and then you're just gonna come back and lift it up, and the handle close. All right, back to parallel. Nope, you're coming up three or two inches. Just come back to parallel. We're moving tiny, tiny, tiny. Don't do this with your thumb. You'll come on, get the flat. Remember, you have to put your thumb on like that. Come on, don't twist in. Just normal. There you go, like that. Now just like that, and don't lift up and do anything. Just know that it's gonna work like that. If, even if it doesn't bounce, I don't care. Yeah, kind of like that. Get the bottom of the bead. Not the shame. No, stop with your thumb. This is, I'm not going to tell you the old school drummer that would do this. Dick would make fun of him all the time. Don't do that. Leave this alone. Don't do anything with just Stop doing stuff. You don't do anything. If you hold it with the grip and you bend, the fingers will open as they should. Not the thumb and first finger. There you got one. So let's get the grip back. Let's just get that thumb on. Come back to this. This is, set you. This is your set. Yeah, you just got it. Let it lay in the whole hand. Take your thumb off for a minute. Now put the flat of your thumb on. You see, you don't need to pinch with it. That's all it's going to feel like. See, the thumb is just normal. Come back into position. Looks pretty good. Relax your arm. You don't have to hold it out. And just lower it gently. Like that. Lift it back up. The stick will come back to the palm. Now don't do that with your thumb. Put, Come back, get your thumb normal. You get, come back here. Now focus on not doing anything with your thumb. 
Just turn your wrist and touch. Don't do anything with your thumb. That's fine. Just trust that. It'll work. Your thumb ain't going to do anything. Let it lay down on the surface. Okay, now come back up. And keep the thumb there flat. Yeah, see the back fingers, all the fingers closed. As you do this, it does this over and over and over. And you could do it this way. You can go, and eh, eh, you can leave the thumb. And you could even leave the stick. But yeah, you kind of like that. You can play with that. Here, just watch me. You can just play with this. Just leave it on the surface and go down and come back up, down, come up, down, up. There it is. Down, up. Now watch this. No, bend down. No, come on. There it is. Now, remember you said to me, I said, just stay with me now. You're about to feel something else. You said, I, you, you said, well, I, I'm just nice and relaxed and and my, I just relaxed my wrist, you said. But you did it and I did mention it to you. You see what's happened? Watch. Do you see any movement here? Like that. Look, your wrist is going up. Stop lifting it up so much. You always come back to the floor. I'm keep, keeping it nice and, see, you learn to play pianissimo now. Okay, now come back to this surface. Back over here. I want to do the butt in for some reason. Stop, stop opening your first finger and, and move it, doing anything with your thumb. Just touch, just touch. Keep bending and let your hand open up a little. Come on, bend like you did over here. Come on, bend a little more. Keep the, come on, bend a little more. This is where I'd like to be with you. I'd grab you by the arm. My dick would grab you by the arm probably at this point. You got this though. Okay, so we're just going to touch, just touch, bend. It kind of feels like you're going around the stick. Yeah, like that, like that. Do that again. There, your wrist is done. Stop, stop, don't move. Stop, once you're there, do it again. Stop, don't move. It's perfect. See, if that, see how little it is, you'd never know. You see, you've gone up, you're ready to throw. All you have to do now, see your arm has actually gone up a tiny bit, so tiny. Look, this would be a tiny throw. But if you cock your wrist, remember we call it, so you cock your wrist to the ceiling, what you'll get is, don't do it yet. So you, you kind of, you bend, even went up a little. Now all you have to do is watch what happens when I turn my wrist to the ceiling for a big turn. Butt ends coming up against the palm. The forearm goes down a little bit and I go whack. And actually get a little throw just like this. So just, just touch and, and just get the feeling of the butt end coming away. And you have to do, no, no, stop lifting here. We're not gonna lift, we're staying, we're all real flat. There, there you go, touch and let the butt end, let the butt end come away from the ball. Kind of like that, do it again, but there you go. Now turn to the ceiling and make a big strike. Come on, turn to the ceiling. Watch, I'm here, I'm here. I can pull you into it. Almost. Now, now we'll try something else. Okay. Now, now we're just going to do this. It's laying in the hand. This is your setup. First finger two. Okay, come back over here. It's on the look at that. Look at your grip. When you watch back at this video, don't change anything. All these knuckles are aligned. You can see a shadow like a line, like an Escher painting. Look, see, it looks really good. When you look at this, you'll see how the stick is kind of following the creases in your hand. And so you're just like this, right? And you're just gonna slowly turn. There you go, turn. Now, why is your thumb pinching? You'll spoil it. Don't pinch with your thumb, keep it flat. We're flat, like that. Now, just using gravity, just let it fall. That's a pretty good wrist here. You're hitting the shank, but it's fine. It's fine. Just feel. Oh, that's lost my grip. Yes, I'm gonna. You noticed? See, you noticed. You lost your grip. All you have to do is hold it with that. Turn up and let it come down. Now try to land on the bottom of the bead if you can. See if you can get that. No. Nope. See, there's no arm. It just falls. It just falls. You know. I'm getting there. 
Now, where's your, get, get the other stick. Okay. So if we did that in both hands, because I, I, want, I want to get the claims on. So you're starting to feel a bunch of cool stuff. Quite frankly, advanced stuff. But I, I ain't fooling around. We, we got we to gotta get rid of whatever pain you're experiencing. So now what we're going to do, remember, start like this. You have two setups. The, the one is this, and you come up. The other one that really worked for you, don't don't come up and give me any of this. It's just see, it's just staying like this. I don't change anything. Let's bring it up. I might roll over a little more, palm down. Not bad. Here, see, you got the kind of that alignment. You're a little wider than I'd like. The yeah, but you're a bigger guy than I am. Okay, that, that's it. Now remember, we want to land on at, at the center of the surface. So get the six. It's a forty-five degree angle. See what it looks like if you're in match. 45 degree angle. All we're going to do is going to lift that stick up and let it fall. Oh, and we're going to lift it straight up. Keep the wrist straight. See the wrist? Like that. Not bad. And just let it fall. <laughs> now the other hand. Now the other hand. You don't have to do anything. You don't go twisting or anything. You just keep this grip. Keep the, the wrist the fulcrum. The wrist is a fulcrum too. Don't go letting go or doing anything. It's just going to come back to where it started. See, starting here and here. Now try not to go out to the side. We're going straight up. Now you're getting re Oh, look at you. Yeah, that's really hard to do. See, you're feeling the middle. So you're letting it. What we want is we want to learn. We there is a way to play so that we are just getting singles, right? But we also want to know how to get rebounds or 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 not, right? So if we, if we have singles, but we're not accessing the middle finger or the yeah, I like that finger, fulcrum. Middle finger, and then and then we also need to let it do this, and then we have. I play traditional, and then we, and then we have what I showed you, which is like a little froze. Squeeze and release. to play this stuff. Yeah, it's already looking better. Okay, so it. Uh-huh. That's essentially all you're doing. So we have a regular wrist turn. Then we have the wrist turn that you're doing in your right where you turn and kind of let it bounce. If we're not doing yet. That's way advanced. Don't jump ahead, but see it's available to you already. Those rebounds are you now you can start to play roll strokes out of the Spivak library. So I'm just going to have you play. Do you, put your, do you have your metronome there? Uh, my phone's on a metronome. <laughs> okay, do you need a couple? You, you, you should probably go out and... Yeah, that's it. You probably need to go out either. If you're yeah. going to pop on a laptop at a certain point, that would be cool. Yeah, I think you're right. I, I need to go. If, if not, depending on where you are right now, if you just want to go out and get one of these cheapy... Metronome. Yeah. However, however, you need to do it, but you you, you want to have a metronome. So when you have a, a, the a, a, a access to the metronome on your phone, see, it's already better. There, yeah, see, it just so show me where it's going to start. Where's it start? And you're going to and stop there. Just don't don't even play. Just play air drums. Don't play. Just come back. Come back to where you would start. There, did your thumb change? Not too bad. Like, the, well, it, it didn't quite cause come back to where you, like that. Or like that, straight up. Try not to go out to the side, come straight up. Keep this wrist straight. Don't do your thumb, your thumb's changed. Okay. That's part of probably why you're jit it's jittery. Things are changing and right. Seven yeah. learn, just hold and turn, hold and turn. Okay, do that, keep going. So. So maybe I'll just give you a, a, a single-handed wrist turn exercise. 
One exercise is a lot. You should watch this video more than once. So if we just go, ah, uh, ah, uh, play quarter notes, so it would just be like this. So we're lifting it up. Now notice that the speed where I lift it is kind of the speed that it comes down. Oh. Now, how come mine can sit here? Let's play half notes. It's just like this. No, see, you want to lift up right away. Mine is just relaxed. Remember, just lays in your hand. Just let, let it lay here. Boom. Yep. Yeah. Don't do that. There. And just use gravity and let it fall and wait. And don't do that with your thumb. Why are you lifting up so soon? You, what you're not, here's another thing you're not quite getting. This technique is up to come down. We don't wait up in the air. That's what you want to do. You're just try that playing on Jupiter. Good luck waiting up here. Ah, you'll have, find it difficult to lift it up and it'll just want to wait. Come on, lift it up on Jupiter and then wait. Wait. No, wait. Two clicks, then do it again. Lift it up when you're ready. And the speed that it comes up is the speed that it comes down. There seems to be a relationship. Watch. The speed it comes up, watch. Don't do that with your thumb. The speed that it comes up is the speed it comes down and it's going to wait. It's going to go up, down. Try that. No, you have to lift it up a little. I want you to turn your wrist up in the air. Up to at least to the, oh, yeah, but you lift it up right away. You are the, you're the free rebound guy. Ah, no, that's not what we're doing. We're pl the practice on the pillow guy. We lift it up and we wait here. Try it. You have to start here. Lift it straight up and let it fall. Lift it up. Lift it up enough. Let it fall. Yeah, wait. When you're ready, lift it up again. Oh, see? You got it. Lift it up again. Don't do anything with your thumb. Just lift it up and let it fall and wait. Lift it up, lift it up. Always lift it up. This, this, you did something with your thumb. It's, you're really good. Do it again. Lift it up. Try to go straight up. Keep the wrist straight. Lift it up. Let it fall. Oh, that was a really good one. Now, you're going to just spend a little less time waiting, but don't change a darn thing. Keep your thumb flat. Don't go shoving it down any harder. You can beautiful sound on a drum. That would sound loud. There it is. Don't change your thumb. Lift it up and wait. Always wait. Up again and wait. Up and wait. Up and wait. Up. Come on, a little faster, but wait. Wait, wait, relax. Don't come up until you found some relaxation. Wait, just wait. Up and down. You don't wait at the top. Don't wait at the top. You come up. It's like a roller coaster ride. Dick would do. Do, does the stick ask for clearance to come back down? It, it's this. It always waits down here, but we just lift it up. It's like we toss it up to ourselves. Ah, oh, and wait. Try it. Thumb, thumb, thumb. Flatten it out. Just lift it up and then wait. Don't go sideways. Keep this nice and flat. Get your grip. Get this laying in the hand feeling. There it is. You're back. You're back. Now just lift it up and let it wait at the floor. No, don't come up sideways. Traditional grip. Come up, palm. You want to learn. There you go. You have to come up. So this hinge is hinging. It's the bye-bye motion. You've been doing this. You've been doing this since you were a kid. There it is. No, not sideways. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Come on down. There it is. Dip down. Always wait down. Speed up is the same down. Don't wait at the top. No, you're waiting at the top. You don't get to wait at the top. Just relax. Come on up. And don't wait and let it drop. And wait there. That's where you wait. Up. Just hold the stick and turn. And wait. Hold the stick and turn and wait. Do it again. Straight up. Don't wait at the top. Flatten out your thumb. Straight up. Wait. Straight up. Flatten out your thumb. Wait. Straight up. Flatten out your thumb. Come on. Keep the thumb. Stop doing stuff with your thumb. The thumb is the finger that's most on the stick. Of the three fingers. It's it's the got the biggest duty. All this can be on the stick. Not just this little bit. All of it can be on the stick like that. Nice and flat. Do it again. Do it again. Keep the stick flat. The thumb flat. Do it again. Don't pinch your thumb. All you feel is it laying in the middle finger when you lift it up. You barely feel the thumb. Why don't you pinch it? 
There, now just do this. Come on. Just come on. Come on. Yeah, yeah, come on. Almost, almost. Now take the stick out of your hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take the stick out of your hand. Stick out of your hand. Stick out of your hand. Make a little, hold a little grape. Huh? Yeah, not natural, just, and just do this. That's, you can do it. Just do this. Come on, hold a little ball, hold a little marble. That's all I'm doing. Oh! Okay, man, yeah, we're stopping there. Much better already. Start to turn your wrist. There's nothing really happening. You don't need to do much. It's about understanding how to fit in with the laws of physics on this planet. Oh, okay. You're going to have fun with this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have you, I'm going to simply have you just go through the ritual of setting up. Well, two setups. This one. And just don't go for speed. See, you promised me you were, right? But you see, it'll come if you just do this and don't do anything with your thumb. After a while, you go, oh my God, it's like I don't even have a stick. I can do this with stick. No, it's hand drumming. It just happens to be a stick in your hand. It could be a toothpick. No, don't lift it up. You're lifting up. You're not feeling up to come down. Up to come down. Uh, yeah, you got to wait at the floor more. You have to slow down. There it is. There it is. You have to wait. No, you always wait. You're not waiting. You're lifting it up right there. And relax your thumb. You're going to start to twitch again. When you're waiting, you can check your thumb every time. Now check your thumb and wait. So flatten it out. Don't come back up until you flatten out your thumb a little more. There. Now you're allowed to come back up. Check your thumb. Wait. Now you can come back up. There. Starting to come. Now nice and flat. So keep maintain. There it is. Let's stop while you're while you're feeling that. You're just going to you're going to you're going to be the kid at Christmas playing with your new Christmas toy. OK, just going to have fun. Watch this video. I'm just going to have you play singles in each hand. But you have to be you have to be. Intellectually honest with yourself. Okay. Just take time. Enjoy it. Make a cup of tea or whatever you do and turn it into a meditation and and what you're going to do is every time you get back you're going to be honest with yourself and say is my thumb do i need to relax my thumb am i waiting at the floor am i waiting up at here or do i just lift it up and let it fall like that no nope. you gotta catch your thumb beautiful dude man there's nothing wrong with you i'm telling you dick wilson would 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 uh, to talk about drummers like Omar Hakim, who have who have a, a, a greater reach, as 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 being gifted by whoever it is that decides these things, right? So having that extra reach is is a real benefit. You ha you have all that weight of this arm, and you have a greater reach, so you're you're golden. Turning off the camera. Oh, yeah.